Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's weekly channeling video is with a special guest who we have spoken to before. We are going to be chatting with David Bowie in the afterlife. Now, if you haven't seen the other videos where I've connected with uh, David Bowie, go ahead and check out the playlist here at Above Life Channel on YouTube. All right, let's begin. I have some very specific questions and topics that I want to chat with David about. And I think he has a divine intention as well because I sat down to do my work today to channel and he is the one that kept coming forward energetically. I could feel him the closest. And so here we are with David having this conversation. So thank you so much for being here. I always appreciate it. And he says, always a pleasure. That's what he says. His response is always a pleasure. It was funny because a few moments ago he said, well, are we going to do this? <laughs> like he was waiting for me <laughs> to get ready to be ready to channel. So, all right, this is a discussion, obviously, <laughs> style channel. His energy feels really good. I want to invite you in as you are watching this to feel the vibrational energy of David Bowie in the afterlife. He has such a level of ascension, a level that's a high vibrational energy beingness is what I would say. And I would equate it even more than when I connect with archangels. It just feels so just profound. And there's an energy, David, that is coming from you from the afterlife, from your energetic presence that I hope that the viewers can feel. So give yourself a moment to just Breathe in the energy and exhale out to connect. It's very gentle, but uplifting. It feels inspiring and sparkly. The energy feels positive. There's a really optimistic vibration and I hope you all can can feel that. Now if you're one that likes the visualization and the imagery, I would describe this as really sparkly energy. So like a, an orb of light, a circle of light, an aura of light that's glittery, sparkly, iridescent, almost pearl-like. And then there are images of actual stars, like cut out stars in it starlight energy and so David definitely has a representation of cosmic consciousness and so I always enjoy these conversations all right so I do want to talk about a conscious topic with you and I'd like to talk about a couple of things I have two that I'd like to talk about I don't know if we'll get to them both but I'd like to start off with if you could give us us we humans <laughs> some insight about manifesting, about creating, and how the energy of that works for us here translated into human life. If you can do that, that would be great. And he says, um, well, I'd like to begin with some symbols. Bridget, if I may, he's going to give me some symbols, which is beautiful. That's a great way to connect. That's a great way to use the, this energy beyond this conversation for you in your own life. So he's going to give us some symbols. Um, a pyramid, um, not just a triangle shape, it's a multidimensional pyramid shape and form which provides insight. And he said, uh, so he presented this pyramid and he said, the key, the key. You, you want to make contact. That, that is what you truly, he says, that is what you want. And in order to make contact, you must have a sequence of, can you, I'm, I'm trying to, I'd rather hear your words instead of just feel the energy, if I can translate that a little better here. He says, um, he's showing me like DNA strands. So there's a sequence to understanding. This is kind of coming as an infused knowledge. I'm kind of getting it in kind of through, through almost like a divine wisdom helmet, 
I don't know if that's the right word to use, helmet. <laughs> so it feels like I just got this helmet on, almost like virtual reality, just, and I can feel the energy in my heart space and the sun is actually coming out when I'm sitting in the kitchen here. So that's where this light is coming from. So let's just allow it to be part of our channel as a natural, a natural um, energy support. And so the DNA strands, and there's a sequence, he says, there's a sequence to understanding and there's everyone has a path holds a path to your own understanding. And this is important to know if you are to manifest. And he doesn't prefer that word. He's actually reframing it to, he does like the word creative, to create. And he says, I know some will turn away from that, a shy away from that term, but, but it really holds a great deal of treasure. And the key to your awareness during your lifetime is to allow yourself to see yourself as a creative. You are constantly and consistently creating. And I know that you've talked about that in other videos, he's telling me. Talked about these concepts, the law of attraction, manifesting, energetic creating, he says. I much prefer the tone of the vibrational frequency that creative creating comes into this, uh, comes in. He wants me to continue to use the word creating or create. So, okay, so there's a formula for each of us as individuals. There's a path to our understanding that allows us what? he says to know that you are creative to know that you create and your life is an example of being creative okay he says there's a wisdom that comes in with you it is born in with you to your life and in your mental capacities it can become warped or distorted. The notion of creative is something that is selected for a few and not many realize that this is the key. This is the key for you to be happy, for your happiness, for your fulfillment, for your success. Oh, I like that word. Thank you. The mind will like that. He says, yes intentional okay. so create create energy creative we are creatives can you talk more about what creative being creatives means and using using the translation of not simply just energy but teach us teach us about this he says it's a core principle of reality in order to manifest as you choose to do. You've got to be creative or it won't happen. And part of your frustration and the reason why you struggle, he said, is because of this. This, it's not even a misunderstood, it's a core principle, creative. So I would, if I were you, I and I had a body and a brain and I needed to manage that and navigate all of that, I would, I would allow myself to begin with the belief of creativity that I am and have the capacity to step into a, a flow state of creativity, of being a creative and to not simply looking at an artist or a musician or an author and recognizing them as creative, but to just, you've got to change your belief. You've simply got to change your belief. And until you can do that, you will not manifest your term. You will not create. Not to the level that your soul being wants for you. And this conflict that is within you, this resistance to allowing yourself 
to believe that you are creative is, is what stops you. It's what stops you. It's what holds you back from success. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredibly obvious block. Okay, so I know, I'm sure, I'm feeling like there's a struggle here. I feel you watching this and I feel myself saying, I like creative energy, I love creative. I identify with creative energy and artistic energy. But I know that there will be people that are watching this that we struggle with, oh, it sounds like a pie in the sky, kind of, oh, airy fairy kind of a thing. Give us some concrete, um, give us some more conversation around creative, around uh, create, and why this word, why this, why, and why now? Why now, instead of saying, hey, let's manifest, how do we attract what we want in our lives? How do we create abundance? How do we, and he says, you really want, you want it all, don't you? That's, and that's the point, you should and you shall have it if you're willing to expand what you currently believe. You are, you are limiting yourselves. So an example would be simply stepping out of your comfort zone, trying something new or different. This isn't a concept. Creative is not a concept of changing and implementing massive patterns of sweeping change in your life that's and committing to it and keeping with it that's not what creative is creative is allowing for the flexibility and the freedom which is really what your soul wants is the freedom to be able to move and go and be in in whatever environment and he's speaking energetically makes you more connected to the values that you you hold as important to you such as like he's saying happiness joy relationship connection all of these things expand you and grow you so simply stepping out of your comfort zone and just trying new things is the way that you can begin to understand what creative is and means. It's not a product. It's not something that you can hold and touch and look at. Some of the results or some of the efforts that you make in understanding how to manifest, he doesn't like the word manifest, but I'm going to use it, manifest for your life will be directly related to creative energy flow state. He's giving me this feeling of like opening up, just opening ourselves up to new ideas, new views, new viewpoints, new ways of looking at the same old things and not, he's, he's showing me like not falling in line, not following the leader energy, but exploring like, like, um, kind of the, the imagery that's coming forward is kind of like a child, like a bunch of uh, first graders on a field trip and they getting, you know, they're in a museum for the first time and they see these really cool things and oh, and they're all going over here and going over there and trying to keep them all together in line and following the, the disciplined uh, structure that they've been taught how to, this is how we behave and we must stay like this. And, and he says, um, to keep the order, and creativity doesn't live in order. It lives, he said, it, he's saying, it, okay. it thrives in spite of it. Okay, so is that to say that creativity is chaos? And is that why maybe we as human people, we don't want that. We want to know. We, want it. we don't want to be surprised. We want certainty. We want to know. He says, that's your mind. That's your mind. It's a mind game. It's a, it, that's your mind. Creativity is not then chaos, and it is not in conflict with order. It's the way you choose to adapt to your situations, to the experiences that are laid out before you, whatever it may be, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's at your home, whether it's in your communities, he says. 
And he's saying, this is profound, Bridget. Like he's trying to get me to buy into or not buy into. That's not, that's not very polite. I'm sorry. That's not, I don't mean to be rude. Buy into. You're getting me to buy into. You're trying to get me to buy into understanding creative. Because to me, like in my mind, I'm like, can it be that easy? To manifest? To create? So, okay, okay, so David, we're talking to David Bowie about manifesting. He prefers to use the term create or creative creating. All the same thing. It's not a label, you guys. It's not for artists. It's for us. Human beings, all of us. He is saying manifesting and creating, same thing. Manifesting and creative, same thing. Okay? All right, so let's take an example. So if I want to create, um, many people are gonna be like, abundance, money, money. If I want to create more abundance in my life, and for many people they might say, well, well, what I think of when I think of abundance is money. Or some people might say time. Time and money are the two big things. I know I struggle with that. Do you, as you're watching, do you struggle with that? Which one is, the, okay, so comment on this. Which one is the most important, isn't the right word, but the most intense for you? Like, which one is your most resistance, time or money? Which one really? Like, if one is the most resistance, like, oh, man, if I only had this, then everything would be better. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about that. So if we're trying to create abundance, uh, apply this concept, like help us understand how, how this works then. How do, how do we do that? He says, well, you've got to be in the creative flow. You've got to have your energy in a practice where you have positive outcomes that only exist because of the opportunities that you can recognize. The opportunities that you recognize come with a great deal of discomfort. It comes from discomfort. When you stretch yourself, that is when you get the best of yourself. And you then step into, not places, you step into pools of uh, more opportunity, more opportunity, more opportunity, more opportunity. And then the energy, he's like showing me like a little pool and then like tons of rain comes in. Rain is like a symbol of abundance and water is a symbol of abundance. Comes in, clears everything, makes it bigger, 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 bigger. There's this huge holding pond. It's really, 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 really big and big enough, deep enough that you can swim in it. So you create this. This is like how the creative flow state grows, gets bigger. Okay, and then we create our opportunities he says, it's not about planning. It's not your mind. Your mind does not do this. The energy within you opens it up. So where in our bodies is this? What, what do you mean the energy within us? He says, you expand your reality. He says, for many, it will be in their heart. And he says, chakra. He specifically says heart chakra. But it, it starts at the top, the crown chakra. It starts at the top and beyond. And in having a true desire to be connected to consciousness, to awareness, to, he's like um, cosmic consciousness, divine wisdom, that's the kind of energy like opening up. You have to be open. And when you're open, the possibilities, the pools come in. Resources come that you didn't expect. Um, you are creating, starting with just the rain, which is the request, the water comes in, which is the request. And the connection to the place within you that holds that pool to catch or like a bucket, little bucket to catch it and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and there's pretty soon there's this pool in your backyard you big enough to swim in, then you're inside the possibility of creative energy. And through that, there are resources and things that show up for you that wouldn't normally be here. And he says, the only way to know this is true, what I'm telling you is to experience it. You've got to experience it. Okay, so how do we do that? He says, you have to open your mind and it's not easy to do that. You've got to have an open mind. In order to have an open mind, you've got to do some things to allow your energy to be at a level where you can receive this as true for you. If you're just trying to solve a problem, if you're just trying to create, my word create, make, manifest, if you're trying to make, 
if you're trying to make money in come into your life, if you're trying to create abundance into your life and specifically money, like or time or or time or money, um, you can't do it with your mind. It looks like you take action, you make changes, and then it results in some benefit which of course is true. It's a pattern of behavior that you've been taught, that you've been trained, that you've accepted as what will give you results, and it will. But if you want long-term, bigger, more satisfying results, you've got to change your mind. You've got to open yourself to the energy flow. It's like you've got to change this. Your mind stops this and you can't even recognize yourself in a creative state, it seems uh, unimportant. So for example, if you take a belly dancing class and you're not a dancer, you don't even do yoga, you're just, and you're not super in shape or anything like that, say you do take a belly dancing class. That energy alone, by putting you out of your comfort zone, can open up and break down some of the resistance that the mind has set in place based upon the patterns of human experience you've already had up to this point. And then what happens is it allows for more positive, optimistic possibility energy to come in. It's like the rain that's filling the bucket and creating the pool and pretty soon you can swim in it because there's a lot of resources that come through in those moments at those times. It's about stretching that comfort zone. It's about moving moving um, the gate a little bit so that some more can come in. It's not, he's not talking about massive changes and huge shifts. He's just saying, you've got to open your mind. And the way to do that is to allow yourself to have experiences in order to create the experiences in order to understand that you can manifest. You've got to allow yourself to be in a pool to allow the, the, allow the energy of that abundance energy to grow. In order to do that, you've got to allow yourself um, experiences like getting out of your comfort zone. I just use the belly dancing class as an example, but it could be anything. It could be anything, but it doesn't have to be exactly related. I want to make money because I want a new car, for example. And so I need more money so I can get a new car. Let's just say that's an example. Well, how can reading a new book or joining a book club lead to getting a new car, making money to get a new car? How about David? Can you answer that directly? He says, there's not a direct path. What you're doing when you open up to the energy, to that new thing, whatever it is, it serves you in a way that you cannot understand with your mind. There's not a direct this, this, this. It's, he says it's not a formula that the mind mathematically could process. It opens and adds to the flow, the flow of opportunity, the flow of abundance, the flow of resource. So I've noticed when you gave this big chunk of information as I was trying to describe it, that you talked about, you connected abundance and resources. And oftentimes you also use the word positive and pool, possibility. Are these intentional or are these just me, Bridget, interpreting words? He says, no, no, no. He says, oh no, quite intentional, quite intentional. Abundance and resources. And then the visualization, the imagery of a pool and growing and the rain, the flowing. And he says, um, it's not, he says, you know, most change does not occur in a tsunami. It's not a huge wave of all of a sudden, I'm, I'm all of a sudden great and magically in the ability to make everything great, make a ton of money and all. That's, he says, he says, you and I, he says, you and I, we both know that's not how it works in the mind and for the humans. It does, however, work in that flow of divinity, the divine wisdom. And I'm not speaking of a, a source, a prime abundance creator that gifts you with all these things. I am simply referring to the connection that is afforded of all of us, whether you are in a body or not in a body because of the spirit that you belong to an incredible and vast universe. And in a cosmic awareness of that, a consciousness that cannot be explained in the mind, that is where this 
these concepts come from. That is where the gifts of these words that represent a flow of energy for you to begin to understand. That is where they are, they are held. That is where they are, it's housed. He uses the word housed. That is where they live and they're alive inside of you because of your connection to the energy. And the flow state of energy is what allows, brings in your spirit. And when your spirit can be free in these ways to flow and to create, that freedom is really what you seek. And it is only your mind that is limiting you. It truly is. It's not just your human, human condition. It is the mind. It is the mind. Wow, this is really deep. Um, I am interested to go back and watch this. David Bowie, we've been channeling with David Bowie, and in this particular conversation, this dialogue that we've had, which is very deep, you've witnessed multiple ways of channeling and getting information, and I want you all to pay attention to that because you get information too. You get psychic information, you get, you get intuitive information, and you interpret energy in multiple ways too. And so throughout this conversation, you have seen many different ways that I channel. And one is through the energy feeling sensing, another is through, and this is called clairsentience, another is through the, the clairvoyance channel, which is the third eye chakra, and that's the visual channel. And another is auditory, so clear audience, where I can actually hear some exact words and some specific phrases of what he says. But because of the level of ascension that David Bowie is at as he's teaching us, because he really is teaching us about these concepts, he's, he's teaching us these, imparting wisdom to us, gifting wisdom to us, he slips into... Um, it's hard to translate word for word exactly all the every single thing i couldn't have done that this whole audio or this whole video it would not have been a good one because it would have been me struggling with the right words to match what really he's expressing which is a knowing like this just this wisdom so i literally got like this helmet of wisdom and then i could feel the energy open and there's all this information that i was trying to like describe to you and examples and stuff that he was imparting to me gifting to me so that we could experience it and share it. So if you want, this would be interesting, go back in the video and the parts where I'm giving you examples, pay attention to the energy of that and see if you, see how much you actually yourself can get the download of information, can gift, be gifted the information through energy. Now, you can do that and allow the information to come in your heart. So that's a great way to do it. Sensing feeling, you can get it in your solar plexus, which is your, your intuition chakra right at your belly. You can get it there for your spirit. Um, if you bring it into your mind, I would suggest having a little file box somewhere <laughs> that your brain can't like get to it and shred it, but that you can <laughs> just have a little file in there for interesting things and uh, intuitive things and allow yourself to recall it maybe in a meditation or when you're journaling, for example, because I think this is, I think this particular channel, thank you, thank you, David, very much, has so much potential and depth here for you to actually learn. If you're interested in learning about your intuition, if you're interested in connecting with your energy at a deeper level, then this is a good um, lesson, a good, I think that this video is a good um, opportunity for you to do that. How about that? So this is Bridget with Above Life Channel. We've been channeling with David Bowie in the afterlife. I asked him to talk about manifesting and he used the word creative. That we, uh, he would much rather use the word create, creative. And so we spent a lot of time kind of exploring and unpacking what that means and what that means for us as humans in our understanding. So I hope you've enjoyed this channel. The goal is always to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope because this this and david would definitely agree he just went mm -hmm. he just kind of turned his head this is your life so live it just live it thanks for watching <laughs>